Cheers. Yeah, but I, I, yeah, but I think they, it's the it's the legacy. It's that it's that name. It's the Clinton name. I think that's what people are like. Well, no, we're not doing that. We're not doing the Clinton thing. We're not doing the Bush thing. We're done. Yeah. You guys can't tell us who to vote for. And I think that is the big the big statement that people are trying to make. South Carolina could be a, a, a bellwether state for Hillary Clinton, and if she doesn't do well there, I think you could see uh, Democrats start uh, start wondering, hey, do we need to get someone else in the race? Because I don't care how well Bernie Sanders is doing, there's no way the Democrats are going to give him the nomination. You I think? Don't see yeah. That. yeah, we think the opposite. I mean, he's he's going to choose Elizabeth Warren as his running mate, and then we're done. Yeah, yeah we're pretty convinced that, that people, especially young people, are going to give him the momentum that he needs to, to be the guy. I'm, I'm a little bit of afraid of that. Well, again, I think you have to go back to will the young people get out and vote for someone like Bernie Sanders like they did with Barack Obama. I think they absolutely will. Yeah. Look, at, look at the crowds that he is generating right now and the money that he's raising in just tiny little increments. That is from young people. And it's the young people who have the, you know, the, the dollar signs in their eyes and those dollar signs represent free crap. Exactly. That's what they want. If you listen, if you listen to Bernie Sanders' uh, victory speech, it really was. I mean, the, the idea is we're taking money away from other people yeah. so that we can give it to you. Yeah. But that's exactly what it is. That's, and, and they don't understand that nothing's free. Nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, though, that the, the, the more disturbing issue is how is it that a socialist and a valid socialist could be, you know, in, in first place? Yeah, if you look at if you look at recent surveys, we, in fact, we just we wrote a column about this um, for the Daily Star this week. This this very thing that 42 percent of Democrats are completely fine with socialism. Yeah. I think it's a great idea. They're delighted. They're 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 getting so far to the left that it's really really worrisome. And that's why we're in this bad mood today because we're we're just feeling like not a whole lot of optimism about beating a Sanders and Warren ticket. And I think the reason that I think there's not a lot of options in there is because a lot of that 42%, it, it's young people. It's young people who are coming up the ranks, and they're the ones who are going to be, the, the ones who are voting so much in the next couple of years. They're the ones who are taking care of. They're the ones, they're the future. And that's what's scary. That's what's depressing. Sorry, I'm sorry. But yeah. <laughs> No, it, uh, you know, I've been preaching about this for, for years now, that the reason we are in the state we are in is because moms and dads are advocating their responsibility for what's happening in the classrooms and in the public schools. Yeah. This is, you know, people don't seem to understand or comprehend what I've been saying, that they are using our public schools against us. Why do you think so many kids are approve of socialism and think socialism is better than capitalism? It's because that's what they've been taught in their schools. Yeah, but, absolutely most, right. but most American moms and dads, they just don't give a damn. Yeah. They send their kids off to school, they don't care what they're being taught. Yeah, why, why bother, right? Who cares? And, and I mean, it's, it's like... It's just the result. You're absolutely right. That's why you got to keep doing what you do, we got to keep doing what we do, and, and we're, we're grateful yeah. to have you on our show every week, Tom. Hashtag never give up. <laughs> well, in the meantime, all these folks are heading into my beloved southern states. Yeah. And they're, they're pretending to enjoy their grits and dropping their G's. Oh, my God. Yeah, Kasich. Kasich told a crowd in South Carolina that he's just talking and preaching. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I can't wait to see how things turn out in South Carolina. Well, it's going to be very interesting. Yeah. I think we ought to disqualify any candidate caught with a fake southern accent or trying to enjoy I'm right there with you. I've read about that so many times on our site. I am right there with you. As a girl from the South, I am I am, I am right alongside you. Let's hope things get better when we talk to you next Wednesday. Absolutely. Thanks, Todd. Bye. It is 4.15. Listen, y'all, we're going to be taking calls in the, in the next segment at 239-9393. Right now, Darren has traffic for us. Hey, um, Idiot. traffic brought to you by Experian, and we are looking at the crashes right now. Start on the south side of town, Emerson Avenue, north of I-465. Absolutely with injuries reported there. Post Road, I-70, uh, crash on the east side. Also, uh, Edgewood Avenue and Franklin Road. Watch for an accident on the south side of town and over on the west side. It's 10th Street, just to the west of I-465. On the interstates, moving along just fine right now. No reported problems. The average FICO score is 692. So before you apply for a loan, get serious about your credit and see how yours compares. Brought to you by Experian.com. Here at Emily in the 93 WIBC Traffic Center. It's 19 degrees in the American Standard Heating Weather Center on 93 WIBC. 
You know, I think there's still lots of people out there who believe that AAA is just for roadside assistance, but there's so much more than that. There are amazing discounts on travel and retail and restaurants and insurance, plus huge member benefits when it comes to travel planning. These are all extra reasons to become a AAA on top of their amazing roadside assistance service. That's right, and even when it comes to roadside assistance, AAA isn't just about towing. Lots of different issues can hit you when you're on the road, from dead batteries to empty gas tanks to lots of keys in the car. AAA can help you with all of those things, but you have to be a AAA member if you want to have peace of mind that you're covered on the road. And AAA's coverage follows you wherever you go, whenever you need it, 24-7. And it follows you no matter what car you're in, whether it's yours, someone else's, or even a rental car. And best of all, the coverage amounts to about 20 cents a day, 6 bucks a month. That's all it costs to get that secure feeling that you're protected on the road. Check into getting yourself and your family a AAA membership. Go to AAA.com, visit any local AAA office, or call them at 844-GO-AAA-GO. I've known uh, Governor Mike Pence for many, many years. Somebody with a long political history here in the state of Indiana. Mighty 3 WIPC and WIPC.com. Valentine's Day is just around the corner. For a Valentine, your sweetheart will never forget an order of singing Valentine. A quartet from the indie chapter of the Barbershop Harmony Society will make a lasting impression. Call 844-SING, that's 844-SING, or go online at circlecitysound.org. A quartet will go to your sweetheart and serenade them. Go to circlecitysound.org, and happy Valentine's Day from Circle City Sound. Mommy, there's a really bad noise back here in the car. Probably my brakes. Well, I had a thunder clatter. Boom, boom, boom. Don't worry, call the car X man. Right now, brake pads are only $79.99 per axle on most vehicles. And that includes installation. Only at Car X. 93 WIBC is your home for the Hoosier Bicentennial. Special on-air features and online videos from the Indiana Historical Society. It's all presented by the Coalition of Central Indiana Tea Parties. This hour powered by Con's Fine Wines for Valentine's. It's six on the right on 93 WIBC. Ah, uh, yeah. 90, yeah, Wednesday. All right. All right, stop. Collaborate and listen. By the way, did we mention that we accidentally saw him in concert? Ever? <laughs> it was epic, you guys. We went to Vegas a couple years ago with our girlfriends. Huh? It was for my 40th birthday. That's right. That's, I'm convinced that's why he was there. <laughs> it was just for me. He was there. It was like an, it, I don't think it was impromptu, although I feel like it sort of was oh, because, you know, what, like no, it was impromptu that up. we decided to go. Because we were like, oh, there's Vanilla Ice. Yeah. Right there. You I should go see him. In a bar. <laughs> it was really bizarre. And then we saw him in concert. It was really good. Well, it was good when he finally sang the song. Like the other stuff he was singing, I was like, why are you even bothering singing anything else? Because I didn't realize he had the song. Exactly. <laughs> All right, um, so it is time to talk about what the hell's wrong with people, and that segment, this segment, is brought to you by CarX Best and Breaks. I, there is something seriously wrong with us for being on this diet, because it is making us so, so pretty crazy. Well, I, I thought it was just everything that's going on in politics. Yeah. But then executive producer Matt pointed out that it's not politics. Because he's like, listen, politics sucks every day. <laughs> it's not politics. It's this diet that you're on. It's the starvation aspect of yeah. it. Yeah. But we do have to talk about politics. Well, well yeah, because yesterday was a big, fat day in politics. It was fat, all right. And we, we you know, we talked to Todd about New Hampshire um, to some degree. <laughs> but, I mean, there's a lot of stories, really, that come out of New Hampshire. Like, what does it mean that we're likely to be faced with a Trump nominee on the GOP side and a Bernie Sanders nominee on the Democrat side? If that's what we think is going to happen. I, lo I love the media spin this morning. Yeah. You know, when I woke up and it was drudge. Revolution! <laughs> That's what it said. I was like, seriously, is that really? Are we going to go there? I mean, I, I feel I need some coffee. Yeah. But are we going to be that dramatic? And I guess it really isn't that dramatic. I mean, do we feel like it is that much of an upset? I guess it is because it's it's the people, like we were telling Todd, is it's the, the people have spoken. Mm -hmm. And they are saying loud and clear that they are sick and tired of politics as usual. Mm -hmm. So they're picking the most unusual 
candidates yeah. as their chosen ones. And I get it. I mean, I totally get the reason and the rationale. It's just really disturbing that we're, we're basically cutting off our noses to spite our face. Now, on our, our side of the aisle, we can, we can talk about the Democrats because it, it's kind of crazy over there what's going on because we'll get to the socialism aspect in a second. And listen, we're going to be taking calls at 239 93 93 and 10 days on the call in. But, um, you know, on our side of the aisle, there's so much divisiveness. Mm -hmm. We see it on our site, we see it on you know, our Facebook page, we see it here in, in, in the station, we see yeah. it on our show, you know, people calling in. Between, you know, just the candidates, mm -hmm. if you like one particular candidate, people will hate you for that. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, we have four writers on our site, including us. In, yes, including us, there are four women that write on our site. And all of us, at different points, have liked different candidates. Yep. And it's amazing to me because we all like each other still. Mm -hmm. We're all friends. And, you know, you, you look out into the broader audience of, like, the, the GOP and, and conservatives, and I see people who, like, you know, people who are Trump um, followers and then people who are Cruz followers and Rubio followers and people who are, like, Carly. And it's amazing how much people hate each other right now yeah. on our side of the aisle. It's incredible. It's just gotten so knocked down, drag out, don't you think? And yeah, and there's no better example than the post that we did that I did today about Ted Cruz's face. Yes. <laughs> so, yes. And, and yeah, let me just give the background the here and now. I have, all, and I've said it a couple of times on the show, but there's something that creeps me out about him. Mm -hmm. I want to like him. I super appreciate his conservative yeah. stance. Yeah. And this, and, and, and this is. And this um, is you, this yeah, is you. So uh, this is me. Yeah. So I totally appreciate his conservative stance, and I, I, I love the fact that he's so principled. Clearly, he's so principled. But there's something that creeps me out about him, and I haven't been able to put my finger on it. So when I saw an article written by a neurologist who actually explained, here's why this might, here's why his his demeanor and his presence may be creeping people out because it creeps me out as a neurologist. Yeah. Here are some reasons for that that like goes to psychology. Like this was posted on Psychology Today. And I'm thinking, oh, this is really interesting. This actually validates the fact that there is something weird about him that's creeping me out and others because we hear it from callers. And you like his politics and just have something about him that you don't like. Exactly. I don't have that. I'm fine with that. Yeah, I post this and 